I want to welcome you to another Pod for Israel. It's been a while, guys, but it's uh, great to be back with Dr. Eris Soref. And we're going to kind of go into kind of some next steps on Ezekiel. I think most of you guys, if you haven't watched the Valley of Dry Bones, the Ezekiel 37 series that we just put out, you're going to have to check it out. I think it's a very powerful, eye-opening film. Uh, but inside of that, we're discussing this prophecy of Ezekiel. And do you want to kind of give us a quick little summary of, of kind of what we taught? Yeah, so this prophecy is um, close to my own heart, also on, in a personal level, various personal levels. But one is that um, part of my family have been in Babylon, you know, around the wow. time or at the time that Ezekiel was prophesying. And they were there for most of the last 2,000 years. They immigrated to Israel in 1950 with the entire, you know, Babylonian Iraqi Jewish population. Wow. And so reading those words 2,500 years ago, you know, and, and, and throughout those 2,500 years, all the Jews around the world, but also the ones in Babylon were praying next year in Jerusalem right. for 2,500 years. Wow. And clearly, you know, uh, read the book of Ezekiel that was part of the quote unquote messianic hope for the Jewish people. So as we were teaching on that, you know, in, in that video that we referred to, we see that God is saying these dry bones, these where they used to be life, and now there isn't. It's not completely consumed, but it's almost there. Yeah. Um, he says these are the house of Israel yeah. in a very real way. So that's kind yeah. of the state of Israel during the exile, both the first and then the second. And God says, I'm going to gather them. He says it two times. He says to the prophet to prophesy two different times. The first time, um, the bones come together and there is an army of dead bodies basically laying in this vast valley wow. and then the second time you know the prophet speaks and the prophet is using used as God's mouth right kind of God is speaking to create mm. then the spirit of God comes and fills the dead bodies and there's this great living army of of um, the people of God ready to fulfill the role and so just a, an amazing picture um, as we look at the present day Israel, God has gathered what, what seems to be absolutely in every way impossible. God has gathered the Jewish people physically back to Israel. Right. Statistically speaking, there are more Jewish people residing in the state of Israel than in the rest of the world combined. Mm. Uh, there is more Hebrew speakers among as native tongue among the uh, Jewish people than, you know, um, any other language among the Jews. And so this is something that has not been in existence at least since the time of Jesus, probably since the time of right. Ezekiel. You know, I just think of like, wow, your family coming to this land in the 1950s from Iraq. Mm -hmm. That's, you yeah. know, talking about the, the dry bones, you know, thinking about that's you were not coming to Israel from a position of power. Oh no! It was just pretty much the clothes on your back, from what I heard about the oh, yeah. that Aliyah from Iraq oh, was yeah. tough. You, you were not allowed to take anything. Yeah, I mean the the Jewish community in Iraq was very wealthy, right? But they were not allowed to take anything with them. I mean, I think it was, uh, I think the the currency at the time was dinar, dinari. Yeah, the dinars. Yeah. yeah, and they were allowed to take fifty dinars. I can't remember if it was a person or a family, and wow. so they left, you know, houses, properties, a lot of wealth and. Yeah, it came without nothing. Wow. What an amazing story. Like to to basically leave with the shirts on your back, oh, basically. Yeah. And a, a, one small suitcase and that's sure. it. That was it. You had to leave every... I mean, in a way, was that part of kind of what kept them back in Babylon for so many years? True. Yeah. The, 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 the meat pot, right? I mean, they right. were... They were crying about Jerusalem, but it was life was fairly comfortable to be completely and in much of the history. There were there were periods when there was persecution, but right. uh, there were a lot of other periods that were in relative prosperity. And then you know your family came to this country with just the shirts on their backs oh, to yeah. a country that wasn't really settled yeah. and safe. So you know when they immigrated, and it's true for you know. Olim or immigrants from, right. you know, from Europe, from wherever, um, there were just simply no housing. 
And there were no houses. Right. So they built tent cities, which are, you know, like temporary right. kind of station. Now, temporary could be three, four years. Yeah. I can't remember. I think for my mom's family, I, I think it was three years they lived. You know, it's basically a tent. Wow. Now, winter in Israel is not, you know, like it is in, in Northern Europe or, or right. North America. But, um, but it's still, you know, it can still be very cold. windy, can be very cold outside, raining, yeah. you know, kind of not pleasant. So and it was not an easy adjustment. Wow. Not at all. Oh, yeah. Well, so, yeah, you, you come here, you're living in, uh, your family was living in yeah. tents. Absolutely. It's a very intense situation. Oh, yeah. Seven <laughs> but, children. I mean, can you imagine wow. a family with seven children? Oh, seven yeah. kids. It was not, was not easy, yeah. And then, you know, it's an uncertain future for the state of Israel at that time. You Absolutely. had lots of enemies. No question. I mean, and, and the surrounding countries are basically, you know, swearing they're going to, you know, annihilate the Jews, drive them back to the sea and, you know. Well, and part of, part of what influenced your family to come here was kind of the, the state of Israel coming as a nation. All of a sudden True. it was like uh, the situation in Iraq was no longer yeah. hospitable. True, true. So, so my um, some of my mom's older siblings, they were already young adults. When I say young adults, I mean I think it was like fifteen and over. Yeah. So they've come. They've immigrated before the state of Israel was actually established. So they fled wow. Iraq before the state was established on donkeys, you know, to Iran. They crossed the border, and wow. from there, the Jewish agency flew them to Sudan, if I remember correctly, and then they flew to Israel. Um, and they were, you know, they were kind of spread out in, in different villages, kibbutzes and stuff like that until the army. Then they went to the army. But my mom, my mom is the youngest in her family. So she and several of her older siblings came with my grandparents, mm -hmm. late grandparents. And they, you know, they're the ones that lived in the tent and all that. <laughs> so that was uh, very temporary. But then they got an apartment. You know, the, the, the state of Israel was building apartments for yeah. those new immigrants. Right. But I think for us, that's kind of when, when God is saying, he's giving us the picture in Ezekiel yeah. that he's going to put the bone to the bone. And then he says, I'm going to put the sinews. It sounds like a process. It is. <laughs> Definitely yeah. a process. You know. Yeah. It didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen in a day. And I think that where we are now, you know, 73 years after the state of Israel is established, um, you know, generally speaking, Israel and Israelis are in a better financial state and right. you know people live in housing and those kind of things um people are a lot more educated there's more educational possibilities and employment possibilities um, so the body is there maybe it's yeah. connected right but there's also great um i would call it spiritual unbelief among the jewish people right. in israel and worldwide well and that's the interesting part because you know uh, likewise, and I know another one of your favorite subjects is, you know, Nehemiah, mm -hmm. in the book of Nehemiah. Sure. And, you know, like we said, there was this time where there was just brick upon brick, mortar on mortar. You know, let's organize, let's gather the people, let's secure the nation, um, even similar terrorist uh, sort of threats. But, but it was just brick upon brick for a, a long season sure. until the word of God was revealed. By Ezra, you know, that, that day, Yom Terah. That's right. So um, what are we seeing today, though? Like, when I, I know when you first came to the Lord, you know, it was pretty sparse as far as the body here in Israel. Mm -hmm. And how have you seen it grown over the time? So, yeah, I mean, uh, <clears throat> when you say it was sparse, I, I couldn't agree more in the sense that, you know, I can say for myself, and you keep hearing it from, from people, you know, right. that, of my generation that came to the Lord in those years, that we all thought that we were the one and only. We've never heard of any other Jewish person coming to know the Lord yeah. um, in Israel. We've never heard about this phenomenon. And, right. you know, I, personally, I was very surprised to read in the New Testament initially that, you know, not only is Jesus Jewish, but all the disciples and all the initial, right. you know, movement of believers in Jesus of Nazareth yeah. are all Jews. You know, I, I, I had no idea. Right. I didn't know really what it meant. However, I think, I think as I look back in those last 30 years or so, something that comes to mind is the life of Jeremiah, hmm. where he was commissioned by God to bring God's message, but it was in no way popular. And he suffered a lot. Right. I'm not comparing myself or, or one for Israel or the believers in Israel to what Jeremiah's went through, not even close. Right. 
However, you know, the message is not um, welcomed by our people, by and large. Mm. It has, there, there's a great change though. Mm -hmm. There's a great change. 30 years ago, I meet somebody, you know, I was a, a student at the university and I would tell somebody, we would get in a conversation, I'd tell them I'm, uh, you know, I'm a follower of Jesus and the reaction without variation was always, how can you believe in Jesus? How can you be Jewish and believe in Jesus? It can be, what's wrong? Yeah. Um, you know, fast forward 30 years to where we are now, when we talk to people, about the fact that we are followers of Yeshua right. as Jewish people, while there's still a lot of disagreement on it, everybody has heard that there's a growing group of Jewish right. people claiming Yeshua mm. as our Messiah. And that's a very big difference. I mean, I think even of, I think of my kids in their early years, they were, I think without variation, not only the only believer in their class, but you know, in their school, basically. Yeah. And uh, that has changed. I mean, now you have, depending where in a country, but I think in a lot more places, you have several children of right. families of followers of Yeshua. And so many of Israel, I would, I would put it this way, of the citizens of Israel under yeah. the age of 35, the vast majority have probably seen some of our videos, and or have a friend yeah. who's a believer in Yeshua. Right. And so uh, the level of exposure is dramatically different, dramatically different. Yeah, I mean, you know, when I try to explain this to people, you know, from, <laughs> from just a numbers point of view, because okay. there's a lot of people that claim revival and awakening and stuff, but uh, sometimes it can be hype. But if we soberly look at the numbers, yeah. it's staggering. It is, uh, there's no question. Over 40 million at you know, to this date, it's probably over that now, but 40 million views inside the state of Israel alone. Now, again, any American ministry or international ministry would be ecstatic to have that. You well, know, the, and, gospel, and in America, in gospel the views. 350 million? Exactly. Amongst a, a population sample of English speakers, which is billions, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, but we're talking about the, just the Hebrew speaking resources. Maybe 8 million. Maybe, Maybe eight million. That's uh, and that's just a stretch of fluent Hebrew speakers right. in the world. Right. In the world, and you have forty million, uh, v you know, views. That's that is staggering. Absolutely, that is absolutely staggering. And so, yeah, it's gone from that we were, you know, unheard of to now everyone knows. And I, I you know, I part of the part of the thing that reminds me of is is your son's testimony on the military base when all of a sudden. There was a yeah. a young man that uh, came across one of our videos. True, true. And yeah. So, so one one guy. <clears throat> this is in my in one of my son's military service, and uh, so this one guy comes to him, and he says, "Hey, you know, well, well, actually, before he came to my son, he started walking around the base. Uh, he was watching some of our videos, walking around the base, saying." Um, Hey guys, you know, I'm a Messianic Jew. I discovered Yeshua is the Messiah. You must, <laughs> you must watch this video. We've, you know, we've not been told this. And so finally another That's guy amazing. told him, well, if you're a Messianic Jew, you should talk to my son, who's also a Messianic Jew. So he comes to my son, he says, hey, you know, I'm also a Messianic Jew. What, what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> so my son told him, um, well, you should read your Bible. That's a good start. He says, but yeah. I don't have a Bible. So um, anyway. We got we got some Bibles and it's is uh, it's it's really fun. He came actually to visit us here. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and and then I heard that like later on, then That's the right. commander was like, ah, yeah, there's been talk about this whole messianic Judaism thing. Why don't you come up and uh, yeah. share what it means yeah. to be a messianic Jew? It's like, true. it's like God's given us such a platform true, in yeah. this day that's. Yeah. It, you know, it's supernatural. It you is, really have is. to say this is a move of God. This is not just business as usual. No question. And I think also, you know, we see a lot among um, younger Israelis, particularly right. pre-military programs or post-military programs, that they wanna they want exposure to to different parts of the Israeli society, and many of yeah. them, many of them seek out. I mean, either they come here or they ask us to send them a speaker or right. other groups of believers in Israel. So of the young adults under 35 in Israel, the mm -hmm. awareness yeah. of the messiahship of Jesus, let's put right. it that way, is 
is is unparalleled, absolutely unparalleled right. to what what it was among Jewish people in the last two thousand years. And I mean, part of that impact can be seen in, in even the lawsuit that we're facing right now. Yeah. You know, we're we're being sued in the courts because, sure. you know, they've they've had their family members come to faith in Yeshua, right. and so it's a ridiculous case, obviously, according to the yeah. law. But you know, but yet it's going to court. Yeah. Because of uh, this is how serious it is. And, and, well, the, the court case itself really hinges. I mean, it has it has very vast ramifications. I mean, right. uh, we, we we really believe that you know um, you know we're going to win, but it may actually may take years. And it, the real matter is freedom of speech and freedom of religion in Israel. Right. It goes way beyond just one for Israel. Exactly. And so our battle here. First of all, I want to say I want to make it super clear that the plaintiffs are not their enemy in any way, shape, or form. Of course, you know we yeah. pray for them. These are the people that we want to serve, and we hope that they come to know the Lord as well. Yeah. But the the, the legal battle itself can have very very serious ramifications. So it's it's something right. huge, you know, for us and 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 everybody else in Israel for that right. matter. And so, like as but, we're yeah. making these steps in ministry here, and as God's on the move, it's like each thing is setting precedent. True. You yeah, could true. say, absolutely. You know, even just how our uh, online evangelism has been rolled out has set a precedent for others to follow, true. and it's a it's an exciting time to be in. And you know, in the past, like according to the scriptures, it was like you said, it was never really op- you know, embraced with open arms. Yeah. I mean, even think of the time of Hezekiah when he. Uh, sent emissaries all the way to the northern, yeah, uh, you know, territories and stuff, and, and invite them come back to the God of Israel, come back to the one who saved us, and all this. And they jeered and they made fun of them and they kicked them out of their cities. And uh, wow, if they rejected them in the days of Hezekiah, whole, and only a remnant came then, what should we expect today? Sure, and you know, I, I think just going back to Ezekiel, I think we're at the at the point where God has given us an opportunity to have a glance, a right. look, an initial look yeah. at this great revival, you know, when the Spirit actually comes to on a national level. Yeah. Uh, right now we're still a remnant, but you know, a remnant doesn't have to be less than 1%. It could be 10%, still a remnant. And that's, yep. that's our prayer. True. And we see that both in the exposure of the gospel, uh, the number of believers, yeah. but also in other ways that uh, as followers of Yeshua, we're leading in, our, in the Jewish society, and one interesting area is actually in, in the whole area of biblical studies. Because unfortunately, hmm. the Hebrew Bible, um, while still a topic that is taught in every public school, is the most unliked, not liked yeah. topic in, in our schools. Because right. unqualified teachers have taken <laughs> the whole life out of it. Um, however, and so you see that all the way through universities here, mm-hmm. and so the group, one of the very, very, very few groups that have a great interest in studying the whole Bible, and of course including the Hebrew Bible, is us. Right. And so our Bible college, or seminary here, uh, has a seminal effect not only on the, the, the national church, but also nationally, we believe, for the coming years, for just... Um, you know, just a, some level of awareness and fluency in, right. in the Hebrew Bible as a basis to, to discuss God's Word. And, um, you know, in the coming years, I think we're going to see some, some of our graduates also in um, national universities here and some key positions, right. you know, should the Lord tarry. Amen. Yeah, and it's exciting. We have some really huge projects coming out in 2022 with uh, these uh, kind of along those lines that you mentioned. Uh, kind of, I guess you could say, like a master class online series mm-hmm. for Israelis yes. to take theology courses to right. learn about the scriptures, not just not just hear the mm-hmm. gospel, but actually learn about the theology and the, how to study the scriptures. Yeah. And the funny thing, even before we even had it online, we already had a guy pay for it and yeah. sign up as we were <laughs> setting right. up a temporary website. So the, right. the hunger is there. True. So um, exciting to see kind of all these things that are going to be rolled out this next year and ways that we're expanding yeah. the ministry. So. And, and this particular um, kind of quote unquote masterclass masterclass style yeah. um, website is 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 uh, a novelty in Israel. So there's no yeah. there's no website like it dealing with any biblical topics whatsoever. 
Right. So really, it's geared. I mean, of course, we welcome believers to to participate. Of course. But we think that the great majority of people that are actually going to, because, you know, you pay a small amount one time, then you can have access to all the material. Right. It's not for academic credit. It's just for information. Yeah. So we expect this to catch like wildfire. That's our prayers. Amen. And please be praying with us. Amen. And, you know, just one final thing. Even with the Bible itself, like we, we, our team developed this brand new yeah. Hebrew only like Bible uh, app and it's uh, rising up. I think we have like over 400 downloads a month yeah. on average Absolutely. Of, of the scripture that has Old and New Testament together, the That's complete right. Bible. That's so right. it's exciting. Well, uh, you know, the cool thing is you hear all this good stuff. There's a lot of momentum. We're seeing... Man. We're seeing the bones have come together. Now the bones are starting to wake up. And Amen. I think for, for all of our friends abroad, like what does that mean to them? One, it's that life from the dead. There's a revival here. God's going to bring Amen. that revival to the nations. Uh, but then, you know, as well, doesn't that speak so much to a promise-keeping God? Amen. That it will literally come to pass. This nation has literally come back together, and he will literally bring the rest of those promises. And our faith is always a forward-facing faith. God who uh, you know, tells you know, us the future to come. In, in, uh, we were just talking about that in class a couple of hours ago. Yeah. How even in the, in, when, when Israel as a nation did not accept the Messiah on his first coming, yeah. that God has used that to become wealth and a blessing to the nations. Right. And Paul is asking if... if if their blindness and their shortcoming, you know, of Israel and rejecting mm-hmm. the Messiah's first coming was a blessing to the nation, just just imagine how much more of a blessing it would be when when they become complete, when they, Amen. you know, believe nationally, Israel believes nationally in the Messiah. So um, there's great blessings coming, you know, not just Amen. for Israel, but you know, for globally speaking, for the nations, yeah. for Amen. humanity. In that respect, that's been the plan all along. Awesome. Well, Father, we just thank you for your faithfulness and goodness. We thank you that you are a a promise-keeping God. And Lord, we thank you that you're at work today, uh, fulfilling those promises for us today and and for your glory. And we just ask that you would be glorified in us and that we would have a forward-facing faith looking to even greater things yet to come. In Yeshua's name, amen. amen. If this touched your heart, will you help pay it forward so that others can hear the same message of life? Partner with our team to bring the gospel to Israel and the nations.